Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Well, hello again, everybody. I'm here to do another podcast on a sci-fi show from my youth called Space 1999. This is a show I didn't really get into right away. Came out in 1975 to 1977. It was like two seasons. It was something I had to grow into. As at, the, at the time, fascinated with Star Wars. I'm born in 71. Battlestar Galactica, Buck Rogers, uh, Star Trek. This one was a little weird to me at first. And I recognized the actor and actress from Mission Impossible. It was um, Martin Landau, Barbara Bain. This was like a, I believe a British television series. And it maybe it had a different feel at the time. But I remember it being a little out of my grasp in a way. Maybe because I'm remembering it earlier since 1975 is actually before Star Wars came out. And although I caught it in reruns forever, I think it's something I needed to grow into. It had the feel of the Battlestar Galactica sort of uh, catastrophe. I think Earth's moon gets blasted out of orbit and the base there and the ships are lost in space I'm doing the quotes and it was a how to get back to earth type thing and they're getting th- thrust through wormholes or black holes making them get further away but you meet other civilizations it's still that type of show in a turmoil within the crew and I think because it wasn't as flashy and as um, extravagant as like Buck Rogers or Battlestar Galactica, where it really appealed to the kid in me, um, Battlestar Galactica might have that little robot dog and the kid on the show, and Buck Rogers had Tweaky, little robot, and that harkens to you know R two D two and so on and so forth. Space 1999 didn't have that um, quirky humor, not taking itself too seriously feel, and I think it kind of just wasn't resonating with me. But as I got older and VHS tapes were created, well, first was Betamax, yes, I was there for that, I would watch them over and over. I had a friend who had like all the episodes on VHS and binge watched, binge watched them and really started getting into it. I think it has the same effect on me like Doctor Who had. I never got into it at first and as a kid there were things that fascinated me and the music and the psychedelic feel of it, uh, premonitions of my acid trips and mushrooms, highs. But Doctor Who was hard for me to get into at first. Then I fell in love with it. And I have my uh, original guy with the curly hair since I'm born in 71. It's a show I think you... It doesn't cater to you as a kid and to be flashy and um, give you little uh, jokes here and there. And maybe more subtly. But I love the actor from Mission Impossible. I remember that show as a kid also. This just took time to grow on me, and by the time I'm a teenager, um, like I said, I'm watching it on VHS with my friend. We would just binge watch it. I started getting a real appreciation for it on what its direction was. And there's, you know, societies they meet, and just like Star Trek, you got weird things going on in space, a phenomenon, and there was things about the moon but that kind of felt like it was lost eventually I think there was a difference between like the seasons on how they were made I mean, there's only two so it's not like there's a whole bunch but I can get into this I can go back and watch this I can read 
um, some of the mythology behind it. And I, I generally look at it fondly, maybe more sophisticated uh, looking back as it holds up maybe better than Battlestar and Bug Rogers, although I still think they're fun romps. This had a lot of tie-ins to um, like I think more Star Trek because of the way it was filmed the way the outfits sort of looked and the direction of the show but I get a real kick out of it still not the fun romp that I would go through but I like the concept of it I, I still get into it I still think it um, has value like time to time I go back and it is something I do binge watch I find that hey you know I want to go into the um, long arcs of it and you know it's special effects and maybe the music had a thing to it too there was you know certain things that catch you at a certain age but I'll say again um, I didn't I wasn't captivated as a kid right away with the show and it was out there it was something that was on tv all the time but i think it's something i grew into i grew to appreciate it i don't know i i think a show like this should be looked upon fondly it tried to you know set a stage for what would be happening in in the future you know we put our nuclear waste on the moon, right? Get it out of our way. And I, an accident happens and it blasts Earth out of Earth's orbit. And so starts the calamity. And I don't know. I, I, I think it's something that doesn't like hold up because of the time. But I, I still have a fondness for it. I go back to it. I think it has a classic feel, a little more sophisticated than, you know, the, the old Buck Rogers and the Battlestar Galacticas. And in time, I'll probably do things like Farscape and uh, Stargate, things that like took it to another level, brought the humor in it, kept it fun. You know, the show had been canceled and brought back. I think it had a little bit of critical acclaim. I think people saw what it was they were going for. It wasn't just um, lots of spectacle to wow you. But I think back then it's a little different. Some shows, I think there was a strike in 1979, 1980. And that had a, I could be wrong about the years. I'm not going to smoke too much pot. But it could be, there were weird things going on back then, just like they probably are now to a different extent, but you have these networks. I just look fondly on this. I get a kick out of watching it. I look back on the progression of my love for the show that it was not immediate, like Battlestar Galactica was, Star Wars, Star Trek. It was just... Um, a learning process to go through with a show like this and maybe it had to do with my development and you know I'm growing up and this being right between the original Star Trek and Star Wars basically it's time for growing up there were certain episodes that stand out like most series I get a, a good feeling when I go back and watch them I recommend it to people if you want to get an idea. They had some really cool concepts, some, you know, out there premises. And then there was um, great actors and really uh, brought a prestige to the show. I think that was part of the um, hook for them uh, to get Martin Landau and his wife to do a show like this. It gave it weight and uh, clout. I think the films they did that were um, put out are a little different for me. I don't remember them as TV 
uh, movies. But there were like four of them, I believe. And they were like... They were like um, taking the arcs and taking chunks of the show. And there's a little bit of weirdness when I go back and watch them. Me and my friend have talked about it. Like, they did something different and started um, maybe using footage from episodes that were already aired that we didn't see. And I think it's, uh, you know, it was a, for me, it was an opening to UK TV, uh, although I was a big fan of um, watching certain specials and documentaries. There were certain shows like Doctor Who, well, again, another show I had to get into. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I think there's a uh, place for it in the history, uh, something to note. I think it's a has a little special place. People check it out, Space 1999. Everybody take care. I'll talk to everybody next time.